Hey, and welcome to another episode of Wrench. On today's show, we are going to do some major interior fabrication on this 1969 Porsche 911S powered by a twin turbo Subaru EZ30R. <music> Welcome back to the channel. If you guys are brand new here, please consider subscribing. This is a really cool build behind me and I'm a dude in his garage using regular tools that you can buy to make a cool car for SEMA. Before I do anything else, I have two pieces of housekeeping that I have to take care of. Number one, we did it. Holy crap, you guys. 10,000 subscribers for the channel. I am absolutely over the moon. If you recall a couple of months ago, I was like, please, if you guys could just like comment and like, can we please get to this algorithm? Can we chip away at the YouTube algorithm? Well, finally, one video broke through, my time-lapse video of building this car until this point. At, at the moment, as I record this, has I think 221,000 views. So that thing absolutely propelled the channel. That was mid-December. I think when that video launched, I had something like 4,200 subscribers and now I have over 10,000 uh, a mere five weeks later. So that was an incredible boost. Thank every single one of you for commenting and liking and subscribing and being part of this whole journey. So I hope I can continue to bring really cool content and make this car as cool as humanly possible. Number two, certainly for this episode, I wanna thank Rode, that's R-O-D-E. I got an incredible care package from them the other day. A lot of it for my podcasting side. I run an entrepreneurial podcast called The Solopreneur Hour. So they sent me their state-of-the-art Rodecaster Pro, which is basically a podcasting console that has all the bells and whistles. But they also sent me two other things. What you're listening right now is the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus shotgun microphone. It is widely regarded as one of the best shotgun mics for DSLR, vlogging, YouTube, on the market. So this video is my first video that I'm using it. The other thing they included is their vlogging kit. Their vlogging kit consists of a little microphone with a dead cat on it. That's the big poofy thing to help prevent wind noise. A great little LED light, a little adapter that you can mount both of them, and then an adapter for your phone. So you can actually use your phone for YouTube or for your vlogging or whatever you wanna do. I'm actually stealing the LED light from that kit because I thought it'd be kind of fun to shoot this video with like some professional lighting and I'm lit up and the car's kind of lit from the background. It's very like YouTube. So let me tell you the story of today's show. I'm gonna turn the lights back on and I've got a bunch of work to do on the car. I was speaking to Dave from TRE Motorsports the other day and with any luck, he comes by later in this video. Apparently, I had no idea, there is a factory Porsche rear seat delete kit. If you guys have been following this build, you know that this whole rear of my car has this aluminum, amazing like aircraft fabrication in the back. Problem is, it's at too much of an angle, and because it's aluminum, it is going to amplify all the noise, it's gonna be loud. Once Dave told me that there was actually a factory rear seat delete, I was like, oh, I totally need that. I've gotta do all the fabrication to give the back end like some actual structure. So this is like above the transmission. It's where the seats would naturally go in a 911. Mine have of course been completely gutted a long time ago, but I need to build some boxes there for my battery and for all my Haltech ECU stuff. So the rear of the car is gonna look like a normal 911, but it's gonna have all this cool trick stuff underneath. Before I do anything, I've gotta take the engine back out give myself some working room, and then I've got to either drill or grind 84 million rivets to get this aluminum section out. To get started, Alexa, garage left on. Okay. Hey, Ben. So this is the first time I'm attempting to drop the engine with my custom cradle installed. <laughs>
uh, drill tip here. I'm gonna drill out a bunch of these rivets. And with any luck, I can keep the thing as intact as possible. Well, some kind of bad news. I mean, not horrible, but I was hoping to be able to extract this piece whole, but it looks like I'm gonna have to drill out two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, I don't know, like 50 rivets. Ooh, I'm drilling my life away. Looking for a better day for me. What is it? Well, here you go, man. That is kind of crazy looking, isn't it? Just this big gaping hole where a seat used to be. As I mentioned before, I was thinking about what to do with the back of that car and somehow miraculously I had learned that there's a such a thing as a factory rear seat delete. So of course I enlisted Dave from TRE Motorsports. Link is right down there in the description. Um, once again, as the guru of all things Porsche, it was like, oh yeah, it's a thing. Tell me the history of the rear seat delete. In the early days of the Targa for the soft window 911 and 912, Porsche offered as an option a back seat delete that utilized the seat wells, you know, the back seat wells right. as a storage area. They had these little latches, you know, for opening so you could have access inside, you know, to the rear seat well. Okay. Which is cool because, I mean, obviously in a Targa, there's no security. Correct. So you, didn't, you couldn't lock anything up, so they effectively made this to be a secure... Well, semi-secure. Ish yeah, place, because they you can just pull a couple screws out of your Yeah, really exactly, exactly. Right. They were constructed out of wood with a couple metal plates. You would take out your back seats, you'd pop this into place, you'd screw it down on the rear seat pivot points, and up front add a few screws. And voila, rear seat delete. How I met Dave initially is that uh, TRE puts on these Targa events, which are like these five day, 1500 mile road rallies through either Mexico or California. And one of the things that comes up a lot is like, it's, it's awkward to try to store luggage in your car when you're traveling so much, you have bags and all kinds of stuff. So to not have those seat wells and actually have a nice surface to put stuff mm -hmm. is really cool. You guys have, you said what, about 10, 10 of these I have about left? 10 of these left, and uh, after that, if demand you know requires it, we'll go ahead, we'll make another run of 20. So if you guys want one of these, um, you can write it in the description below or reach out to Dave at TRE Motorsports. Again, the link is right there. And uh, just let him know you saw it on this video and you're interested in it. We're gonna show you now kind of what the bare bones version looks like in a car and then show you kind of what we're gonna to have to figure out to do for the blasphemy build. This is the driver's side seat back, and what the factory did was they held it in place underneath the rear panel, back there, with a couple of Phillips screws in each corner. After you remove that, then you would have access to the outer screw, which goes through this flange here, and the pivot in that corner. We've got the bare bones panel here. Do you can see how much space we have inside? It's very easy to install. It matches the interior panels of a 69 uh, through 73. You'll notice this weird little notch back here. That was for the factory sports purpose roll bar. So indicating that the factory did indeed want these installed in coupes as well. So this is the underside of it. And here's the tour of kind of the finished one, which looks really good. It's got some heft to it, but what a nice, you can see kind of how they've covered the original roll bar holes with one more piece of thin wood. And it's just nice, it's really well constructed. So now that we have the idea, 
Now it's like, how do I fit it into this thing with all of this roll cagery in here? And that's what we're going to work on. I was hoping I'd be able to use some of this original stuff as a template, but it's gonna to be too hard. But we do have contour gauges. We've got different materials that we can play with. Plan is to use this one as a template mark it out on this and cut it out so it's basically like the stock factory form and then see what I'm gonna have to modify to get it to fit into my car. This may be a two-parter, I don't know, we'll see how long it goes. Have I, have I played you the clip of this engine in anger? You're gonna, it's, you're gonna go, oh, okay, I got it. This is my engine, wait for it. Just, it's just filth. It's a filthy, filthy sound. That's awesome. Yeah. That is that engine. At that one happened, happened to have a supercharger on it, but really, uh -huh. this is gonna happen. See how long they. Yeah. 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 Mufflers. Yeah. 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 Mufflers. Mufflers. Yeah. Mufflers. Yeah. Mufflers. Yeah. Mufflers. 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 different according to the year and don't forget we're allowing for upholstery and from the on the original temple we're, we're, then, uh, you, you don't have upholstery in this chassis angle wise angle wise it's gonna be up here ish right yeah oh you're just holding it up yeah Oh, what are we doing? This. This shows us. I see the line. We're actually, we're pretty much, it's right here. That's the line there? That's the line from the, from the previous, previous bodywork. So we're basically just building it out here and then reinforcing everything so we can get it out in a relatively stable piece. We'll cut the wood, which is going to be obviously oversized, and Trim and trim and trim until uh, it's right. I don't know if it can. Uh, we'll try with a harder uh, yeah. template. We got ourselves a piece of melamine, like we're gonna build the top half of a half pipe. And we're gonna cut it roughly the size before we shape it into the corners, but as this thing develops, it would appear as if I'm gonna have to cut the whole thing in four pieces much like the aluminum that came out because to squeeze it around this roll cage is, is fairly complicatory. Cut that thing 10, 15 times, right? Okay, so Dave and I went back and forth about 20 times before we got each side of the rear deck to actually fit like it was supposed to. But now is time for me to do what I gotta do, which is build out the entire underside of the chassis. So effectively sealing 
the passenger compartment from the engine compartment. Underneath the car, all of this under here, all of the white, I have to grind because I have to create an area that I can weld to, which means all these rivets have to go. All of this stuff, everything on the front side, all of the rivets on that side. Basically what I'm gonna do is gonna be building in a steel section that separates this passenger compartment from the engine. That'll obviously make it quieter, the exhaust won't be flying in. You know, as a race car, this guy didn't really need to do that. As a street car, I definitely need to, and I also need to have a spot to kind of effectively mount this rear deck area. So my plan now, put my earbuds in, Put my audible.com on, gloves, mask, glasses, and literally start grinding my life away. I think it's gonna probably take me like an hour to get the thing cleaned up enough to where I can start measuring to fabricate for welding, which is what I'm really excited about. All right, this is a couple hours of grinding, and I probably have still about another hour to go. Um, I did begin the process of cutting off these, which are the things that held the NASCAR bars. So I will cut those off, continue to grind this thing out. I made a significant discovery today that may explain why my welds haven't been as good as I have liked. As you guys know, I'm legendary for my pigeon poop welding. Uh, this is the inside of a welder. This is the welding wire. It goes over here to the motor. The motor then has a wheel that the wire fits inside and then it's got basically like compression let me get let me get in here this fitting clamps down on the wire and then it feeds the wire to the gun the wheel i have that came on my craigslist welder is actually too big for the wire i have what happens with that is that means that this wheel which provides compression and then spins the wire into the gun was actually never getting purchase the wire could just kind of go through all willy-nilly problem with willy-nilly which is a technical term you don't have to concern yourself with is that the wire could come out quickly and then slow down and then kind of quickly and then slow down even more and then go a little bit faster and then slow down there was no consistency in the wire speed because it wasn't getting properly clamped problem with that is that's where the spark is so as the wire is inconsistently coming out, I'm getting blobs of weld and then nothing. And then a little bit more and then maybe a little bit more than that and then back to nothing. It's almost impossible to get a consistent weld out of that. So tomorrow I will get the proper wheel for this welder. And I honestly think between that and the new helmet I've gotten that my welds are going to get significantly better. Until then, I've got another hour or so of grinding to do, which I will check in with you guys in a second. So I will check back with you in about an hour. Well, I've spent about four hours yesterday and about three solid hours today grinding. And it's no fun. I am, however, towards the end, and I have an idea, which is probably a terrible one, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Now, I have just gotten a Harbor Freight sandblaster, and I've slightly modified it, so that I have basically the hose and the sand, and it's kind of portable. I have a few spots on this car that I cannot physically get any sort of tool into, but need to be paint free. Like inside where the rear control arms mount, in between little thin pieces of metal, and the white paint that's on here now flakes off so easily. So I have to get rid of that so I can then put a little weld through primer so I can build the outer section of this thing. I'm gonna seal the car up. I'm gonna jump inside and in just a few spots, I'm gonna spot sandblast a few things. I'm going to make a colossal mess. It's probably a terrible idea, but I'm doing it anyway because that's what we do around here. We just send it. I realize that I'm gonna get sand everywhere and it's gonna come out when I paint and all these things, but I'm gonna do my best to really seal off the cabin, do as much as I can to seal from the sand. So here it is, you guys. Here's my portable sandblasting setup. I'm trying to contain the sand as much as humanly possible. I have taken my crappy welding helmet and I've taken out the welding part. So I have just a face shield. I'm gonna put on gloves. I've got a light in there and I'm gonna spot sandblast everything I can. Wish me luck and I'll see you on the other side.
Okay, so here we are underneath. I can't even tell you how much work this just was. I mean, I've done about nine, 10 hours of grinding to get to this point. Here's the plan. I'm gonna hit the parts I can with my favorite roll bar and chassis paint. Once the roll bar and chassis paint dries, I'm gonna pull some of the blue tape off and hit it with weld through primer. So that's the plan right now. And uh, oh my goodness, I have so much sand in my ears. Peeling this tape off while it's still just a teeny bit wet. I just wanted to show this to you guys because it's kind of the first time I'm finishing something on the car. Like, hey, it's an actual finished surface. Now, I don't know if it's gonna be this color, but it just feels really good just to get something kind of done. My plan was I'm gonna do one more chunk of fabrication to box in the control arm squares, but then I realized that I would have to do more fabrication than I really want to tonight, because I'm gonna actually have to cut them in half and shorten them and re-weld them and then weld them on to the tops. Not doing that tonight, but here's the deal. So I'm gonna wrap this. I'm gonna put out another episode like in a day or two. So as soon as I finish this stuff up, I'm gonna post it pretty much right away. So stay tuned for that a little later this week. And uh, once again, as always, thanks for hanging. Super fun. Today was cool just to get this thing done and kind of have a dialed one little section, which is sweet. As always, Thank you for watching. If you guys are new to the channel, it is customary to send me a high five. Tell me where you're from. Where are you watching this video from and how did you find me? That's the big question of this week. How did you find Wrench? Where did it come from? I'll see you guys next time.